For me, Blade Runner is more than a movie. It is so masterfully crafted that it is kind of an alternate universe, an alternate reality of a 2019 where some events diverged from our timeline at some point in the past, leading to this incredibly advanced yet dystopian society. I clearly remember how blown away I was when I first saw that movie about 25 years ago as a kid. Even then I realized how groundbreaking the visual style was. The neo-noir atmosphere having been so well constructed that it basically became a window to a cyberpunk future vision of the world. A world I hope I could explore someday myself. I was so fascinated not only by the visuals, the incredible set design, the architecture of this neo-noir vision of a future LA, but also by the scale of technological progress the movie promised us. 25 years ago, 2019 still seemed very far away, especially from the perspective of a child, and I wondered if the world would be similar to Blade Runner in 25 years time. Technologies such as genetic engineering, artificial humans, space travel to off-world colonies, and of course flying cars, which back then had to be in every sci-fi movie, sparked my imagination of this future world. A future I was looking forward to, despite the dark undertone of the movie. And now, a quarter of a century later, Especially now in Munich. Except that reality is still far away from the technological level depicted in movies such as Blade Runner. Or is it? Welcome to Sci Fi Dynasty, the show where we talk about sci fi, science, and technology. I'm Chen. And I'm Sebastian. Chuan, by the way, what exactly is your profession? What is your profession? I have a master's degree in mathematics. What nice! How about you? <laughs> well, I have to admit that I'm a physicist. Sorry. Excellent! <laughs> what would you say to combine our powers and explore sci fi topics with our united strength? Alright then, let's take a look at a few famous cyberpunk movies and games. We will do a separate video on cyberpunk animes because there are too many interesting ones to be covered within this video. Let's start with the upcoming game that we are very very excited about. Cyberpunk 2077 is an upcoming game by Polish developer CD Projekt Red. It's really hard to describe how much I'm looking forward to the game since CD Projekt Red is not only one of the best game developers out there, but the style and topic of the game is just amazing. The setting of the game is Night City, a fictional city in California in the year 2077, and by the look of the gameplay trailer, it basically covers all of the cyberpunk themes that exist. But what makes up cyberpunk? Well, the shortest possible definition is high-tech, low-life. This means that cyberpunk shows an extreme disparity between the technological level of a society and the living standard of most of the general population. In the cyberpunk world, high-tech is prevalent, it is everywhere. This means technology such as cyber implants, augmentations, robots, androids, neural interfaces, cyberspace, high-tech skyscrapers are absolutely mainstream. However, at the same time, most of the population is living in poverty. But not enough, cyberpunk settings always show a world with rampant societal problems such as violence and a high crime rate, while at the same time, the rich live in absolute splendor secluded from the poor, either high up in the skyscrapers or in guarded areas that aren't easily accessible to the general population. This extreme disparity between high-tech and low-living standard is essentially what defines cyberpunk. 
and we think that the game will capture this very effectively since from the looks of the trailer the game looks like the very definition of cyberpunk. Other noteworthy examples of cyberpunk games are for example the Deus Ex series of games where augmentations are the main focus of the game, meaning robotic or cybernetic enhancements of the human body which enhance mental and physical abilities. And Ruiner with its over-the-top violent style and super dark cyberpunk setting of a dystopian future. And now on to the movies. We've already mentioned Blade Runner. However, Blade Runner is so complex that we have to take a closer look at this one. When Sebastian first watched Blade Runner, I was still a baby. However, years later, I also saw the movie and was also very fascinated by it. It is in my opinion the most iconic and visually stunning example for the cyberpunk genre ever made. The combination of high tech and low life as in Cyberpunk 2077 is driven to an even more extreme level. Old and new coexist confusing relationships, whereas the wealthy literally live above the poor. The giant Tarai corporation has replaced the government as the center of political power, occupying the astonishing but also forbidding mega structure, Tarai pyramids. The police seem omnipresent and patrolling flying cars called the spinners. On the other hand, the artificial humans known as replicants are treated as slaves, only entitled to work under harsh conditions for their entire life. Despite enormous skyscrapers with constantly shining neon lights and billboards, the 99% poorest live on crowded streets, suffering from pollution and overpopulation. Needless to say, Blade Runner is such a visual masterpiece that even decades after its release, the typical neo noir future vision is imitated by numerous movies and video games. To fully explore the themes in Blade Runner, we will certainly need a whole separate video in which we shall also take a closer look at its worthy successor, Blade Runner 2049, having come into the cinema just last year. Besides the Blade Runner series, other prominent cyberpunk movies include The Matrix. Here, the cyberspace aspect is absolutely dominant. The whole reality itself is a simulated world, where people are connected via machine brain interfaces to this virtual cyberspace. Ghost in the Shell is another example of an excellent cyberpunk adaptation of a famous Japanese manga. We mean the anime, but also the movie, which, despite some shortcomings, depicts in a visually stunning manner the cyberpunk world of a future Hong Kong. Now let's compare the technological level of a cyberpunk world with that of our real world. How far are we actually away from a cyberpunk world? Could our world become cyberpunk in the future? Or is this already cyberpunk? Okay, we now take a look at some key technologies and compare them point by point with existing ones. Let's start with machine-human interfaces. Okay, to be fair, it is already possible to control a computer via a brain-computer interface, which works with electrodes that read minuscule currents created by the brain activity. The brain waves are thus converted into binary code, which can be read by a computer. And then there's also a game called Mindflex, where you can battle an opponent in a competition of willpower, which works in a very similar way. You have a helmet with electrodes that again reads your brain activity. However, a real human machine interface like in the Matrix or in Cyberpunk 2077, it's not here yet, but it is in the works. Elon Musk's mysterious company Neuralink is supposedly working on exactly that, a real neural machine interface. However, at this point in time, very little is yet known about the company and no details are yet available. But we'll keep a close eye on this one, we promise. We're watching you, Elon. We're watching you. The second criterion in our real-life sci-fi comparison is artificial humans, robots, and cyber implants.
Well, we clearly see that Saifa again strongly overestimated our technological capabilities. Yes, yes, we know there are awesome impressive robots and androids in the works right now around the world. However, they are still prototypes and still in very early development stages and very far away from mainstream. Plus, technology-wise, they are lagging behind quite a lot compared to cyberpunk and sci-fi movie depictions. So we still have quite a ways to go. Unfortunately. And now on to the third point, cyberspace. Movies like Charlie Legacy and Matrix show impressive cyberspace universes. But how does reality compare? Now on to the fourth point. What about the cityscape, the architecture? Might we already have some cyberpunk looking cities right now in the world? Sidney and Ridley Scott had giant skyscrapers in mind, with heights of at least one kilometer, where the upper class people would never visit the street level and just live very high up in these mega structures. Turns out, Building something like this is still beyond our technological capability. However, we do have some pretty futuristic and cyberpunk looking cities around the world right now. Check out these videos from our last trip to your home country, China. This is the first time, at least visually, that we can kind of keep up with sci-fi depictions of the future. It indeed seems that some cities, mostly in Asia, can already reflect the look of cyberpunk future regions. So it seems that technology-wise at least, we still have quite a ways to catch up with cyberpunk and sci-fi visions of the 80s. However, from a visual perspective, we are not so far away anymore. Okay, so hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Because we'll keep coming with interesting topics revolving around sci-fi, science, technology, futurism, and we'll compare many technological developments to sci-fi concepts, because the world is becoming pretty sci-fi. And now excuse me, I have some very important stuff to do. <laughs>